As we prepare to hear the scripture readings, let us first invite the Holy Spirit to illumine the word. Let us pray. God of our salvation, we thank you for the gift of faith. We thank you for all those who have taught us the good news of faith as it comes to us through your word. Kindle in us always an openness to hear your good news so that we may live the life to which you have called us. We pray in the name of the one who brought life and light through the gospel, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading is from 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. It may be found on page 211 of the Pew Bible, if you would like to follow. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, <coughs> excuse me, but is now then revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The gospel reading is from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 17, verses 5 through 6, and may be found on page 80 in the New Testament section of the Bible. Listen again to the word of God. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. The word of the Lord. In the first chapter of Paul's second letter to Timothy, which Jackie just read to us. Following the customary salutation or opening greeting, the Apostle Paul writes about the deep gratitude he feels to God when he remembers his beloved child, which is how he refers to Timothy. Timothy is not his biological offspring, but there is such affection between Paul and Timothy that it's as though there's a familial 
connection. Paul writes in 2 Timothy 1, 3, I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. And then Paul writes about how he is reminded of Timothy's sincere faith, a faith that he is aware Timothy received from his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. First in this letter, gratitude is expressed for God. And second, gratitude is expressed for those who have sown seeds of faith in Timothy, namely Lois, Timothy's grandmother, and Eunice, Timothy's mother. We don't know anything about Lois, Timothy's grandmother, except that she's mentioned here. She's not mentioned anywhere else in the New Testament. Eunice, Timothy's mother, is described, though not named, in Acts 16. There we learn she's a convert from Judaism who married a Greek. Since 2 Timothy mentions neither father nor grandfather, scholars infer that perhaps neither became Christian. Our passage for today supposes that both Lois and Eunice were instrumental in sowing seeds of Christian faith in Timothy. As I was thinking about this passage, it got me to thinking about the faith formative people in my own life, what we'll call the Loises and Eunices. Those folks who, when I thought of them, made me grateful to God for how they helped shape my faith. So I thought about my mother most especially, but also of my grandmothers. However, for some of us, mothers and grandmothers may not be the faith formative people in our lives. Obviously, there are others who fill that role. I listened to a podcast on this passage, and the speaker, Caroline Lewis, said she was grateful for the faith formation she received from her father, springing from this chapter in 2 Timothy on the occasion of her confirmation. Lewis said in the podcast that she has 2 Timothy 1, verses 7 and 8, written on her heart as words of faithful encouragement she received from her father. Recall verses 7 and 8, or you can look them up. God did not give you a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. Lewis was saying on that podcast that when she reads these verses from 2 Timothy, she hearkens back to and is thankful for the seeds of faith sown in her by her father. When you think of those for whom you are grateful for the ways they've encouraged you in faith, who comes to your mind? Who are the Loises and the Eunices you offer thanks to God for? Because of the seeds of faith they have sown in your life. Each one of us is here in worship this morning, thanks largely in part to a Lois or a Eunice in our own lives. And I'd like for us to take just a minute to think about who those people are for you. As I've said, these folks don't have to be mothers or grandmothers, as they were for Timothy in our reading. Perhaps for you there's a teacher, a friend, a relative, a neighbor, even an author or writer for some literature or poetry helps to serve as faith sowers or faith sustainers. Who helped to plant 
a seed of faith? Or who introduced you to faith? Or who encouraged you in faith? Or with whom do you share faith formative experiences that began to open you up to the divine? Think for just a moment about your Lois or Eunice, and then give thanks to God for this person, friend, author, relative, who has sown seeds of faith in your life. Maybe even name that person out loud now, if you'd be so bold. Virginia Fuller. In the gospel passage from Luke that was read, the apostles are desperate for faith. They plead with Jesus, increase our faith. And Jesus lets, lets them know it's not so much the amount of faith that's essential. It's just the fact that one has faith. That's important. That seeds have faith, have somehow been sown. That's what's important. As one commentator put, puts it, Faith has value only because God blesses faith and empowers the faithful. The disciples seem to want to quantify faith and acquire more and more of it, feeling as though they don't have what's essential. And Jesus says in hyperbolic fashion, if you have faith even the size of a tiny mustard seed, a minuscule amount, then gigantic things can happen. And where does that mustard seed size faith originate? It comes from the Eunices and Loises who sow it and nurture it and foster it and encourage it. And sometimes even just gently hold it out there for us, in front of us. The country singer Dolly Parton has a wonderful song called The Coat of Many Colors which seems to me a fitting illustration of gratitude or tribute for those who've sown seeds of faith in our lives. It's a song about the Loises and Eunices. Does anyone know Code of Many Colors? Okay, good number. Parton sings. You can sing it with me if you want. Back through the years I go wandering once again. Back through the seasons of my youth, I recall the box of rags that someone gave us and how my mama put those rags to use. Parton sings a song story about her humble youth and how it was late in the season of autumn and she didn't have a winter coat. So her mom took scraps of fabric or rags that had been given to the family. She sewed them together to make a coat for her daughter. As her mother sewed, she told her daughter stories. And one of those stories was from the Bible about a coat of many colors that a man named Joseph wore. And her mother sewed love and faith into every stitch. And the daughter couldn't wait to wear this coat to school to show it off, to share it with her classmates. She was so proud of it, so she heads off to school with patches on my britches and holes in both my shoes. In my coat of many colors, I hurried off to school just to find the others laughing and making fun of me in my coat of many colors my mama made for me. Her classmates laughed at her colorful patchwork coat when she wore it to school. She couldn't understand why, because she felt she was so rich because of the love and faith her mother sewed in each stitch. She felt her coat was worth more than all their fancy clothes. And Parton concludes, Now I know we had no money, but I was rich as I could be in my coat of many colors my mama made for me. Oh. It's a beautiful, 
beautiful song and a poignant story of gratitude for the seeds of faith sown, literally sown, into her life by her mom, her Eunice and Lois. Sometimes when we show up and share our stories of faith, others may find it difficult to understand the beauty of that faith and may even be hostile or closed to what we have to share. Sometimes there's real heartache when we recall those who've sown seeds of faith in us, either because those faith formative ancestors are dead or because others insult them and us as we try to share that story of faith. Sometimes you and I don't get it. It isn't others. We get frustrated just wanting to increase our faith rather than realizing that a mustard seed size is okay. Our stories of faith are as varied as the Loises and Eunices that we have thought about today. Remarkably, each one of those unique Loises and Eunices have led us to this exact same place, to this table. On this World Communion Sunday, we gather at this table like the varied pieces of colorful and tattered rags and fabric on a patchwork coat, each with our stories of faith. And we gather from north and south and east and west, from Potomac and Rockville, from DC and Anacostia. We gather with Christians across the globe in Bangladesh and Rwanda and Afghanistan and South Korea. We come from the places where the Loises and Eunices in our lives have stitched stories of faith together for us and have planted seeds of faith. And we gather here with Lois and Eunice, with the sower of seeds of faith in our lives and in the lives of others. And it's here that we are made whole and beautiful like a coat of many colors. Each one of those Loises and Eunices pointed in some fashion to the one who showed us what it means to have faith, Jesus. Jesus, as host at this meal, is the one who unites us at this table and heals us at this table. He is the host who took it upon himself. He took upon himself the humiliation, embarrassment, and name-calling when we showed up in that outfit of faith. He took the taunts in his body on the cross, and he presides at this table as meal and as host. He draws us in, enfolds, and clothes us in a coat of many colors, as varied and as wide-ranging as he can imagine. And then he says, even if you have faith the size of a tiny little mustard seed, you can do amazing things in my name. Come. Come with that mustard seed-sized faith and get some nourishment and be made whole here today. Amen. <laughs>